Ryan Bates trade, Ryan right? Bates. Fifth round pick, Ryan Poles Ryan. traded for Ryan Bates from the Buffalo Bills for a fifth round pick. Uh, you know, Ryan Poles did try to get him in his, you know, his inaugural season, did try to get Ryan Bates. Uh, you know, but then I think the Buffalo Bills signed him to uh, or match the offer sheet there. So, yeah, it looks like, you know, the Bears are trying to get some depth there. You know, it looks like Bates, he had uh, both, he has both snaps at guard and center. So, you know, gives some positional versatility there in the interior, which the Bears have struggled. And you know, we just released Cody White here. But, yeah, I guess what is your overall thoughts on that trade for the fifth, you know, with you, with the fifth round pick there, Pat? Um, is this good? Is this bad? Is this, you know, whatever? Like, what do you, what are you thinking here? You can really tell that like pulls, if he likes a guy, he like, he, he remembers him. It's not like this is one of those guys that he had his eye on. And, and maybe that's a good thing for us. Maybe polls knows why it is that he wanted Bates, uh, you know, for as much time as he's been kind of been on him because like the word I got was, you know, Bates, you know, last year was a backup. I mean, when we were putting out that offer sheet, I think he was a starting guard for the Bills. Uh, he kind of took a back seat, you know, last year. Um, didn't necessarily play like a whole lot of games, a whole lot of snaps. So, I mean, for us to spend a fifth round pick, that seems maybe like a little bit uh, beyond what, you know, the Bills, you know, probably thought of him. Uh, you know, maybe a sixth or seventh, like, which we don't have, like could have been more interesting, but I found it funny that today, like the Bills released their own center, Mitch Morse. So I was kind of like, hmm, like, man, they must have really not wanted Bates there, you know, to back him up. Like they are dumping a lot of cap. So they're getting rid of a lot of guys like Jordan Poyer and Tredavious White got released today. So it's like some big names are starting to fall for them. But yeah, for us, like it doesn't hurt to have some depth there. Like obviously we were looking at guard. We're looking at guys who can play center. Like, I don't think this is a bad thing for us. Uh, a fifth rounder, like, it's okay. Like, we'll, we'll have more fifth rounders in the future and things like that if this, you know, this guy doesn't pan out. But, uh, yeah, man, I guess I'm like, you know, just, just I'm okay with it. I think it's like if, if Poles knows what he wants out of Bates, then, like, that's a good thing. Like, that's what an architect should be doing at this point in, in terms of you know, constructing our line and, you know, obviously talking to Pete on our last episode, uh, folks, if you haven't seen it, go, go check out our episode about the bears with, uh, with our, uh, special guest from bears talk, Pete, but essentially like what he was saying is just, you know, his, his priorities, you know, going into next year would be, you know, first and foremost, like building that offensive line. So I'm okay with it. Like, I think that's a decent deal to make. Yeah. And I think this sets things up, uh, potentially in two ways and gives them some flexibility, right? in that we could get Connor Williams because Connor Williams is uh, injured probably until maybe November or December, you know, this, this coming season because he tore his ACL during that same time frame uh, this previous season. So he's not going to be seen. And if, we're, if we are going to be moving on uh, from Justin Fields, or even if we do keep Justin Fields, like we want to have somebody that has played center has some NFL experience. You know, this isn't going to be his rookie year necessarily, and he's just going to have to learn on the fly in a very much prove it year, either for Justin Fields or yeah, you want you want to make sure if just if uh, Caleb Williams is going to be starting his rookie year, you're going to want to make sure that the line is you know decent at least. So, and I think you know what we've seen with Ryan Bates, he had a you know he's he's been okay, he's been decent, he hasn't been great or all pro. Yeah. So, you know, I think, yeah, we can use, utilize him. He's a death piece, plug him in there. You know, uh, I think people, they're talked about that fifth rounds. Like that seems like a lot sometimes for like a backup, but we don't know exactly what we're going to be getting or how effective that, uh, you know, if, if we were to say draft a, a, in the fifth round, a center or guard of some sort there, we don't necessarily how that person's going to be, but we do know what we would be getting from Ryan Bates. So, you know, I'm fine with it. It's it's not something I'm in love with, but uh, I think it definitely does position us to, you know, get uh, a, a Connor Williams in free agency. Or, you know, if Ryan Poles really does love a uh, center in the draft, you know, potentially having him. And then maybe, you know, he sits a little bit, learns the system a little bit, 
behind Ryan Bates initially. And then, yeah, maybe he that center could, could potentially take over that spot because, yeah, I don't believe Ryan Bates is a long-term solution. So um, that he's already been playing enough, that I think, for us to kind of make that assessment. So, yeah, uh, overall, it's okay. But it definitely, I think, positions us up to maybe make some moves uh, in the interior offensive line. No, I, I agree. I think Bates will be more motivated than he's ever been just to think that like the Bears tried to sign you a couple of years ago and then like they've gone ahead and traded for you at this point. Like they really believe in him. So hopefully, you know, wherever his talent level is at, hopefully, you know, can add to it with, um, you know, just kind of like this new, you know, this new fresh start for him and like kind of going off of, uh, you know, not wanting to disappoint, you know, polls and the rest of the staff that have kind of identified him as, as the next guy in line. So uh, good for him. And yeah, I'll be pulling for him to, you know, obviously do his best uh, for our line. Um, I guess sticking on bears, the one thing I saw on Instagram, I thought was interesting today. And I saw another one uh, pop up on YouTube, but we'll start with the one that's gotten the most uh, smoke, I think uh, around different channels on Instagram, but this idea of Saquon Barkley, um, you know, being interested uh, in joining the bears. I think there was like five teams that were identified as being like the primary suitors for him. Um, so I guess that's the first thing. And then also online, I saw a Josh Jacobs video going to the bears. There's mutual interest there as well. Um, we haven't really talked about like a premier running back when we talked about our free agency, uh, additions, the things that we would do if we were, you know, the GM of the bears, but like, what would that mean to you if we brought over like a Saquon and, or a Josh Jacobs, like how much do you think we would have to, you know, spend, um, and if we did, like, would you be happy about that? Or would you feel like a little bit of guardedness going into, you know, next year? I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't like it one bit. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. oh. and and maybe I am part of the devaluation of running backs uh, bandwagon, I feel yeah. like. Uh, I, especially with this team, even if we do have Kale Williams, you know, rookie quarterback there, uh, you know, we still have Kula Herbert. We still got Roshan Johnson. The weakness, I feel like we can direct more capital towards offensive line, building that up. You know, if we do want to get Lloyd Cushenberry, right, we can spend money on Lloyd Cushenberry there, you know, if he's available rather than, say, uh, Saquon, because I think they're actually going to be asking for similar amounts of money, uh, maybe a little bit more from Lloyd. I mean, it looks like he's been projected to get like $14 million, which, I mean, that seems really high because uh, I think right now or this previous season, you know, if we were to use that $14 million, that would make him the, like the highest paid center in the game. And, you know, his Madden rating isn't that good. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then compare that to like a Saquon, right? It's like, hey, you know, from a need perspective, we don't need him that much. And we have been proven to be pretty effective, you know, with Roshan, with uh, Killer Herbert, uh, Deontay Foreman, even, you know, when we had him. So, uh, I don't see the need necessarily to get Saquon. Is it exciting? Is it a great name? Yes, but for what, $11, $12 million or something like that, multiple years, I wouldn't want to have that contract on my books. So I would much actually rather have, you know, draft a, like a, a, a Bucky Irving right there or something like that in the third, maybe fourth round if he, if he uh, hits that or if he falls that far. Because, um, yeah, I think... You know, having a running back by committee, I think that's a better, much better way to go. Having running backs that complement each other's, you know, talents and strengths, I feel like that's just a better route, especially in this, uh, you know, more modern day type of NFL. I think that's what we need more so of. Yeah, I'm in line with this. I mean, I feel like it's exciting. Uh, it'd bring a lot of confidence to the offense if you had a guy like Saquon on your team. I think the part that I would be interested in is let's say the market like really flattens out as we go through free agency and like none of these backs are signing anywhere all of a sudden a guy like that becomes available on a one-year type of deal uh we have the cap to do it like we've already fulfilled all of our priorities if it's possible if we swing it like that would add a game breaker to our offense like i would like it for that type of situation but the ezekiel elliott deal is still that cautionary tale where it was like he really played hardball with Jerry Jones. Jerry gave in, gave multiple years at a very high AAV. You know, he was actually in his prime. So it was like, 
the, the negotiations or the reasoning behind him getting that deal made total sense. Like everybody as fans was like, of course he should be getting that kind of deal. But we also know what happens when he does. And man, it wasn't too much longer after that, that like Pollard started to emerge that he was, you know, becoming more of like a, you know, split duty back at some point throughout that contract. It really, really became like a really poor contract for Dallas. And it's like, it sucks, man. It, like it really does suck for running backs. Uh, I don't know what they can do. Like a lot of them are talking about positional changes and things like that. Like I heard Saquon's like, Hey, I may as well just like line up as a slot receiver or something like that. And I'm like, Hey, if that's going to help improve your value, like maybe you think about that. But yeah, from a roster construction standpoint, like I'm, I'm right with you. Like we, we have priorities on our list that are going to make us a Super Bowl contender. Like the, the goal should be Super Bowls, not just uh, looking great and uh, like pretty in the NFC North. Yeah, and I guess I'm looking at the Las Vegas odds, and you know maybe what makes more sense for Saquon. Uh, do you know what team he's favorited to uh, join? Uh, I'll say the Ravens. Ravens. They are number looks like six. I think the one thing knocker on the Ravens is that is the cap space, obviously. So that might be one reason why. Okay. Like. You would have to probably take a discount, but he is ranked. They are ranked six here. Number one uh, is is the Houston Texans uh, because yeah, I think they're like mm, yeah. top, they're like number three or something like that uh, with regards to cap space. Because hey, look, rookie quarterback contract. Hear that, Bears fans? <laughs> so yeah, rookie quarterback contract. You have the flexibility to get that Saquon uh, deal and everything. So yeah, and. Honestly, like, do we remember what what the number one weakness of the Texans were this previous year? It was running back. Like, that was evidently clear that mm. they had absolutely no running game. Uh, yeah, with Pierce, Singletary did better, but you know he he definitely isn't necessarily a game changer. Uh, so yeah, having a Saquon, I think, could do wonders for uh, the Houston Texans overall there. But yeah, and the next are Chargers, Cowboys actually, and. <laughs> Uh, and then the Giants, and then the Bears, you know, uh, uh, ahead of the Ravens there. But, yeah, I feel like, I mean, that could be really something, right, if Saquon does join the Texans. Yeah. 